time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What My Line, brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the world's number one electric shaver, the Remington. Now, let's all play What My Line. And now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And tonight we have an unusual pleasure because our mystery guest of last week is striking back by joining the panel. But more important than that, it is... It will be his first appearance on Broadway in a forthcoming play after 20 years. The play is going to be The Happiest Millionaire, and we are the happiest panel by having with us tonight Mr. Walter Pidgeon. And uh, may I say that I am the happiest poor man that's ever been on the... Uh, on the uh, the, the panel here tonight. Last week I sat over there and I was on the opposite team from you and the young lady that it's my great pleasure to introduce now, Miss Dorothy Kilgown. Dorothy. And now it's my pleasure to introduce a gentleman who at two o'clock this morning rescued our moderator by pulling him out of a very deep swimming pool in Mount Kisco, Mr. Bennett Surf. That's really a true story. Um, uh, uh, our moderator thought he was a member of Billy Rose's Aquacade, I think. And here he is, all dried up, Mr. John Charles Bennett. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again tonight, we're going to uh, present some folks who've got some very interesting occupations, and we trust that we'll give the panel a run for the money. Actually, we'd like to stick Walter Pigeon, you know, new on the panel, and he was here last week with us. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel in a little while, but we'll meet our first challenger in just 30 seconds. Time to meet our first challenger, so will you come in and sign in, please? Well, <laughs> that's fine. I think I'd better explain right away to the panel. We are not going to allow our challenger to write his name because in one instance, perhaps more, there's a possibility of recognition. So you get no name. Where are you from, sir? Arizona. Arizona. That's where you came from originally, was it, Arizona? That's a long way you've come. So come a little journey with me, will you? And sit down right here. And I wonder if you're familiar with our scoring system, are you, sir? Yes, I think I am. Good. If you're familiar with our scoring system, let's let the folks at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is. bit of help. Mr. X is salaried, and we'll begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Well, now, Mr. X, is it Mr. X because of the fact that one of us on the panel or all of us on the panel might have seen your name in print? Possibly. Uh, do you work for a profit-making organization? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Pigeon. Then I gather from that then that he, that he uh, is... Uh, in the services in some way. Either that, that means that he's with government or... Uh, uh, may I ask, uh, uh, are you in politics? No. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you work anywhere around Phoenix? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Rex, you have a very military bearing. Are you in any one of the armed services? Yes. All I have to do is guess which one. Mm-hmm, and what well, he does. Uh, Arizona would be, uh, would suggest to me... Uh, well, now, let, before you, before you get I, tripped up here, now, remember, I made a point of saying that's that where you were originally from. from, yes. Nevertheless, I shall ask you if you have anything <laughs> to do with the, with airplanes. No. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. John was honest for once. <laughs> <laughs> 
Did you arrive at the fact that he was in one of the armed services, yes. Dorothy? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Is it the army, sir? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Pigeon. Well, the Navy wouldn't be in, uh, in Arizona, would they? Right? That doesn't matter there. It doesn't matter. That's just where he's from. He's only from Arizona, oh, oh, and the Navy's oh, from yeah. everywhere, as we know. Yeah. Then I, uh, uh, I ask, are you uh, with the Navy? Yes. Ah. Now, <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, where do I go from there? That's the whole thing. Uh, you see the world from there. <laughs> yes. And, uh, I see somewhat of a blank from there where I am as well. Now, uh, may I ask, uh, Admiral, are you, uh, uh, are you, at, uh, are you uh, at sea, or are you, no, I can't ask, or I want to, are you at sea, uh, uh, you have a desk job today, then, is that it? You're at sea. <laughs> I'm at sea. I'm not sure, Mr. Pigeon, which one of us is at sea. Would you <laughs> yes. Well, if there's any question of mine, I'll let you know that Miss Francis was 100% right. And I'm right out in deep water. I was when I came in, but I, 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 are you today stationed on shore? Yes. Are you stationed in Washington? No. That makes it six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, are you in the Navy proper as distinguished from the Marines. I'm sure that's the wrong way of making the distinction. I am in the Navy proper. I see. So um, are the Marines. <laughs> Never as proper as the Navy, of course. Uh, well, are you, uh, do you hold the rank of commander or above? Yes, I do. Above? Yes. Admiral? Yes. Well, I told you, you thought, that. I, I thought, thought you thought you were <laughs> I'm being a good sport about this. I know uh, who he is. Well, now, uh, do I have to find out uh, what the admiral is admiral of? Well, I, I think it would be good fun for you to try, because uh, he does hold a rather significant post, oh. and just see if you can figure it out. Oh, do you have anything to do with something uh, that's newer than just a plain battleship? No. no. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Seth. Admiral, have you any connection, whatever, with Annapolis? Yes. Do you, are you the head of the Naval Academy? Yes, there? I am. Yes, yes. <laughs> Rear Admiral William H. Smedberg, third, right, sir? Right. And Commandant at Annapolis. A man who, uh, if I may say this without unnecessarily embarrassing you, has held big commands at sea. You commanded the battleship Iowa, I believe, sir. Did That's you right. not? Yes, I did. After all of this um, a command at sea, how do you like this new job? I think it's the finest job in the Navy. You think it's... Well, that's wonderful, sir. I'm... With a wonderful bunch of kids. Well, that's good. I think that's probably Admiral, why... may I ask one question? Yes, sir. You got to beat Army this year? We sure are, and every... <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy, do you have a question? Yes, we all have such admiration for Annapolis and the Navy that I hope that the Admiral won't hold us against us, but we're so unseaworthy on the <laughs> I'm sure he won't. Actually, as I told the Admiral before the show, I'm the oldest retired lieutenant junior grade in the Naval Reserve, and uh, he's going to be kind to us because of that. Right, sir? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> sir, yeah. nice to have had you with us. Thank Would you. you say goodbye to the panel? Yeah. Yeah. Good beginning, panel. I must say, let's see what you can do with the second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Mamie? Mamie Cody, is that right? Uh, Miss or Mrs.? Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Cody, and where are you from? Uh, Bristol, Tennessee. Bristol, Tennessee. Yes. Well, it's nice to have you with us. There is the panel. Panel, Mrs. Cody. Mrs. Cody, will you come with me, please? You sit right here. Are you familiar with the way we keep score? Uh, I think so. Well, actually, every time you can give them a no answer and, and have it stand up, I'll flip a card, and when you've done it ten times, you've won the game. All set? All right. All right, then let's let the folks at home, those who are here with us in the theater, know exactly what your line is. Mrs. Cody is self-employed, 
And let's begin the general questioning on the other end with Bennett Cerf. Mrs. Cody, may I take it for granted that you are no relation of Buffalo Bill Cody? Uh, well, back in the family, there was a little relation. Buffalo Bill? <laughs> really? Well, this has nothing to do with your occupation. No. Correct. No. Do you do your work down home in Tennessee? Uh, well, yes and no. I mean, you could do it there? Yes. And you're self-employed? Do you yes. perform some kind of a service, Mrs. Cody? Uh, yes. Is it a personal kind of a service? Uh, well, yeah, I'd say it was pretty personal, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a little hard, but I don't quite understand your term of reference. It's personal to the degree that there would have to be an area of identification, if not immediate contact, between Mrs. Cody and the recipients of the service if there was to be any satisfaction on either oh, side. Oh, oh, oh. I should... <laughs> I should never have pulled you out of that pool. <laughs> you should never have shoved me in. That's what I want to know. Mrs. Uh, John, would you mind repeating that? I didn't oh, hear. no. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Cody, uh, do you do your, perform your service for both men and women? Yes. Uh, do you come in direct contact with these men and women for whom you perform the service? You don't? No, I don't mm. believe so. I wouldn't say. <laughs> oh, no, you wouldn't. Well, no, no, no. Time to go, Miss Francis. Is there anything entertaining about what you do, Mrs. Cody? Yes. Would people enjoy watching you do what you do? I think so. <laughs> do they also, apart from seeing you with their eyes, would they be liable to hear you with their ears? Well... I think they could. They could. I would, uh -huh. you know, this uh -huh. is very likely. Would you be considered in any way, Mrs. Cody, a performer? Well, yes. Uh, do you perform at all out of doors? Yes. Do you have anything to do with animals? No. I'm sorry. <laughs> For the animals, that is. <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Mr. Pigeon. Uh... Is there a, a, quite a bit of training required to get yourself ready to uh, perform these services? Well, no, I wouldn't say so. Oh, 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 but uh, Mrs. Cody doesn't seem to agree with you, does well, she? Well, I think perhaps she's too <laughs> modest. She thinks she comes by this talent with, um, out the work that I know must have gone to it, or uh, some people wouldn't be very happy, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I, are you uh, uh, connected in, in any way that you have anything to do with any political organizations? No. <laughs> <laughs> What she does yeah. might come in handy in a political organization, <laughs> organization, but I don't think necessarily she has any affiliation with same. Three down, seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mrs. Cody, does your work require either strength or agility? Well, yes. Uh, do you uh, touch people in the course of what you do? No, I don't yes, touch anybody. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Cody, are you connected in any way with a form of athletic endeavor? No. no not as Fighting such. Fighting or wrestling or nothing. Mm -hmm. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. When you are performing, uh, Mrs. Cody, would you be liable to hold anything in your hands? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would that be part of your uh, value as an entertainer, to be able to do whatever it is to hold something in your hands? Uh, yes. Is what you hold in your hands ever, could it ever be used in any kind of a destructive way? Yeah. <laughs> uh, does it require any ammunition? No. no. <laughs> that makes it six down and four to go. Mr. Pigeon, I'm going to give you one more minute. Yeah, You're going to give me what? what I'm going to give you one more minute, all of you, to get this. Oh. Do you, uh... Do you uh, play some kind of a musical instrument? No. <laughs> Seven down and three to go, and whoever got hit over the head with the flag of the is, is what you hold in your hand sharp, ever? Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Could, 
it be something like a knife or a sword or a spear? Yeah. Do you throw it at a target? Yeah. Are you a knife thrower? Yes! <laughs> panel, Mrs. Cody is a professional knife thrower, and actually you've been touring the country for years with your husband and your and daughter. daughter. Is your husband the target? Uh, yes, he's out in the audience. <laughs> no, take it. Not on Sunday night, please. No knives to be thrown. That man with all those bandages <laughs> on out there. No. <laughs> There's not a bandage in the house. Yeah. Well, Mrs. Cody, thank you. I think you gave them a lot of trouble anyway, and I'm sorry we didn't stick them all away. Nice thank to have you with us, ma'am. Good night. <laughs> Tonight's we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends on the panel have been blindfolded. Are the blindfolds all in place, channel? Panel? Yes. Panel? Uh -huh. Panel? Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You will ask questions one at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And let's begin it with Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you in motion pictures? <laughs> uh, that, yes. <laughs> Mr. Sir. What was that answer? That was a yes. 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 Yeah. Wait till you get a no. Was that answer made by a, a feminine voice? I guess that's all clear now, Bennett. That's a yes, too. Miss Francis? Is she in a cage? <laughs> uh, would you be considered a leading woman? I don't know. I think we would say yes to that, Miss Francis. Mr. Pigeon? Sounds like a female Walter Pigeon, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, have you, uh... Have you just arrived in New York uh, to start rehearsals for a new play? Now, uh, Mr. What? Pigeon, this uh, gets us a little bit mixed up. You have reference to a new play to opening on Broadway for the following season? Or the coming season? Well, you wouldn't come into New York at this time of the year to start rehearsals for a play that's going to open in 1957, would you? What is, I, don't, I don't get your, your question, Mr. Daly. Well, did you have specific reference to beginning rehearsals for a play to open on Broadway? In other words, the legitimate theater? Yeah. That's good. That'll be no. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. <laughs> well, uh, are you going to open in something in New York, if not a play? Well, here we are, and it's only Sunday. Let me see. Let me have a small conference. I'm sorry, Sarah. Sounds like a simple question. Oh, no, she's coming in New York to do a picture. That's all. She's going to make a picture. Maybe she's that's in that's New York that's doing that's a picture. That's what I meant. Oh. I am not actually <coughs> certain, Miss Dorothy, of the precise use of the word open, but we will accept that our guest is going to, in a sense, open in something, yes. My turn now? Yes, Mr. Sir. Does that mean that you have come to New York for the specific purpose of, a, of making a motion picture? Two down and eight to go. That, that was a no. Oh, that was a no. <laughs> Miss Francis. That was a no? Yeah. Well, because of the squeaks in your voice, are you new to motion pictures? <laughs> almost. No. Mr. Pigeon. Almost? Almost. But she, yes. Oh, almost. Mm hmm. Relatively new. She won't be able to talking pictures. No, she'll be in silent pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Before you went to pictures, had you uh, uh, gained quite a reputation on the uh, New York stage or the London stage? Three down and seven to go, Miss Gilgallan. Are you a little girl? <laughs> yeah, it's a little girl. <laughs> generally, using the term generally, a little girl, Mr. Sir. Are you of uh, foreign birth? Miss Francis? Was that a yes? That was a yes. Oh. Oh, no. That's... Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a young foreigner. Uh, 
Did you appear in picture... Well, wait a minute. Strike that off the record, please, it's Your Honor. Struck. Uh, <laughs> will it help us any to find out what country the young lady is from, John? I mean, should we go on that tack, would yeah, you I say? Yeah, I think it, it would help you. Since we're getting nothing from the voice at all. Hmm. All right. Um, are you an actress from Italy? Oh, yes, Mr. Yes. Pigeon. I just happened to guess that. Oh. We've had Sylvia oh. Magnana, so don't bother. You have, you have had Sylvia? Yeah. Oh, then I'll split that one. And we've had Adam Magnana. Little girl from Italy. Holy smoke. Yeah. If you have no uh, Have you a sister who is also from Italy, who is also in pictures? <laughs> Miss Gilgallan. Are you Marisa Pavani? <laughs> Marisa Pavani, right. <laughs> I must say, Mrs. Jean-Pierre Aumont, if I may, that I've never seen anybody push a voice as high except Walter Pidgeon, who last Sunday went his right straight up through the rafters, it went. I remember. I enjoyed it very much. But I had laryngitis, my dear. <laughs> you have tomorrow. <laughs> I hope not. I thought you were just a soprano. I didn't know you were a coloratura. You know? You're way up there, aren't you? I try to do my best, you know. Yeah. I manage. I don't think we... Uh, did you ask? Did you state the sister before? Uh, no. That Miss Pavan is Pierre Angela's sister, sister, who was on our program, was and she yes. is married to Jean Pierre Aumont, mm -hmm. a French boy who never taught you to speak like that. No, <laughs> I should say. Well, Mrs. Pierre Aumont, thank you very thank much you for being our guest. And being we gave her a rough time. It was nice of you to come. Will you say goodbye? Let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you come in and sign in quickly, please? Ken? Ken Sherman, right? Yeah. Where is he? Where are you from, Springfield, Massachusetts. Mr. Sherman is from Springfield, Massachusetts, panel. That's come with nice. me, Mr. Sherman. Sit you right down here. Do you know how we score? Yep. Fine, let's let everybody at home, those here with us, know exactly what your line is. About two minutes and 45 seconds. Mr. Sherman is salaried. We'll begin with Walter Pigeon. Well, everybody else uh, that's been on has been in services, so I'll say, do you, do you uh, what's the other question? Do you deal in products. products? Do you deal in products? Yes. You do deal in products. Good try. Ah. A good try. It was when yeah. I hit it right. <laughs> now then, uh, let me ask you about these products. Uh, are, they, are, they, are these products found in the home? Some. Sometimes. Sometimes. But as a rule, they are, they are, these products are more out of the home than in the home. That's right. Are they used by both men and women? Yes. Ah. They're used by both men and women. Are they a, a product that one uh, would get uh, pleasure out of rather than derive a benefit from? Uh, I think we would have to, in the main, say that uh, you get a no to that. There no are that. peculiar circumstances where you might get some pleasure, but I don't know what they are. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. And this is primarily a useful object. Yes. Is it solid rather than liquid? Yes. Would you imagine I would have one of these? <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> no, I've got to say no to that, Dorothy. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Has this product, Mr. Sherman, got anything to do with food either before it's eaten or after it's eaten. Neither. No. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Is it anything that comes in contact with the body, Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would it be put upon the body in some way ever? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does it have any restraining qualities of any kind? Yes. yes. Are you thinking of what I'm thinking of? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is? Nothing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Would it go around the body ever? No. 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 Four down and six to go. We were and thinking of the same thing. Actually, I think you'd have gotten it. So we've run out of time because you're getting real close. Handcuffs. We'll fling all the cards over. Handcuffs. Handcuffs yes. is right. Mr. Sherman makes handcuffs. Ah. Oh. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Sherman, for being my host. Actually, I was a summer job, and Mr. Sherman is going to Springfield College pretty soon, where he's going to finish his education. And now, before our panel says good night, here is a word from next week's sponsor. 
I just thought of something. I think the nice thing about Bennett's pool at 2 o'clock this morning was it had water in it. <laughs> yeah, that's right, too. And until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Arlene Prince. Good night, John, and good night, Mr. Pigeon. We hope that you will be the happiest millionaire for many, many seasons. How very sweet of you. Thank you very much, and good night to you, and good night to you, now. Good night, Walter. Come again. Good Thank night, you. Bennett. You know, I think the most extraordinary answer we ever had on this program was a lady who threw knives at her husband and said it didn't take any practice. <laughs> good night, John. It's true. I go with you, Bennett. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Life? Travel arrangements on What's My Line are made through American Airlines. American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagship. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Codman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Be sure to watch Remington Rand's other television program, The Ernie Kovacs Show, on Monday night on another network. Yep, uh, I ask, are you uh, with the Navy? Yes. Oh. Now, <laughs> <laughs> well, where do I go from there? That's the whole thing. Uh, you see the world from there. <laughs> yes. And, uh, I see somewhat of a blank from there where I am. Now, uh, may I ask, uh, Admiral, are you... Uh, uh, are you, at, uh, are you uh, at sea? Or are you... No, I can't ask. Oh, I want to... Are you at sea? Uh, uh, you have a desk job today, then, is that You're it? You're at sea. <laughs> I'm at sea. <laughs> I'm not sure, Mr. Pigeon, which one of us is at sea. Would you <laughs> yes. Well, if there's any question of mine, I'll let you know that Miss Francis was 100% right. <laughs> I'm right out in deep water. I was when I came in, but I, I, are you today stationed on shore? Yes. Are you stationed in Washington? No. That makes it six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, are you in the Navy proper as distinguished from the Marines? I'm sure that's the wrong way of making the distinction. I am in the Navy proper. I see. Uh, so are the Marines. <laughs> <laughs> Never as proper as the Navy, of course. <laughs> Uh, well, are you, uh, do you hold the rank of commander or above? Yes, I do. Above? Yes. Admiral? Yes. Well, I you told you thought, that. I, I thought, thought you were kidding. <laughs> I'm being a good sport about this. I know uh, who he is. Well, now, uh, do I have to find out uh, what the admiral is admiral of? Well, I, I think it would be good fun for you to try, because uh, he does hold a rather significant post, oh. and just see if you can figure it out. Oh, do you have anything to do with something uh, that's newer than just a plain battleship? No. no. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Seth. Admiral, have you any connection, whatever, with Annapolis? Yes. Do you, are you the head of the Naval Academy? Yes, there? I am. Yes, it is. Yes. Right Admiral William H. Smedberg, third, right, sir? Right. And commandant at Annapolis, a man who, uh, if I may say this without unnecessarily embarrassing you, has held big commands at sea. You commanded the battleship Iowa, I believe, sir, did That's you right. not? Yes, I did. After all of this uh, a command at sea, how do you like this new job? I think it's the finest job in the Navy. You think it's... Well, that's wonderful, sir. I'm... With a wonderful bunch of kids. Well, that's good. I think that's probably Admiral, why... may I ask one question? Yes, sir. You going to beat Army this year? We sure are, and every... <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy, do you have a question? Yes, we all have such admiration for Annapolis and the Navy that I hope that the Admiral won't hold us against it. Yes? Do you have anything to do with animals? No. I'm sorry. <laughs> For the animals, <laughs> that is. <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Mr. Pigeon. Uh, is there a, a, quite a bit of training required to get yourself ready to uh, perform these services? Well, no, I wouldn't say so. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're too much. This is Cody naturally, huh? <laughs> no, I would say this, Walter, and I think you will agree subsequently that uh, you would accept that there is a substantial degree of training necessary to become proficient in the service that is uh, performed, yes. But uh, Mrs. Cody doesn't seem to agree with you, does well, she? Well, I think perhaps she's too <laughs> modest. She thinks she comes by this talent with, um, out the work that I know must have gone to it, or oh. some people wouldn't be very happy, I'm sure. 
Uh, are you uh, connected in, in any way? Do you have anything to do with any political organization? No. <laughs> <laughs> What she does yeah. might come in handy in a political organization, <laughs> organization, but I don't think necessarily she has any affiliation with same. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mrs. Cody, does your work require either strength or agility? Well, yes. Uh, do you uh, touch people in the course of what you do? No, I yes, don't touch anybody. Four down <laughs> and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Cody, are you connected in any way with a form of athletic endeavor? No. no not as Fighting such. Fighting or wrestling and mm -hmm. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. When you are performing, uh, Mrs. Cody, would you be liable to hold anything in your hands? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would that be part of your uh, value as an entertainer, to be able to do whatever it is to hold something in your hands? Uh, yes. Is what you hold in your hands ever, could it ever be used in any kind of a destructive way? Yes. <laughs> uh, does it require any ammunition? No. no. <laughs> that makes you six down and four to go. Mr. Pigeon, I'm going to give you one more minute. Yeah, You're going to give me what? what? I'm going to give you one more minute, all of you, to get this. Oh. You, uh... Uh, do you uh, play some kind of a musical instrument? <laughs> <laughs> Seven down and three to go, and whoever got hit over the head with right. the flag the ball. Is, is what you hold in your hand sharp, ever? Mm, yes. Yeah. Could it be something like a knife or a sword or a spear? Yeah. yeah. Do you throw it at a target? Yeah. Are you a knife thrower? Yes! Uh, Will it help us any to find out what country the young lady is from, John? I mean, should we go on that tack, would yeah, you say? Yeah, I think it, it would help you. Since we're getting nothing from the voice at all. Mm. All right. Um, are you an actress from Italy? <coughs> oh. Yes, Mr. Pigeon. Oh, yeah. just happened to guess that. Oh. We've had oh. Sylvia Magnano, so don't bother. You have, have, you have had Sylvia. Yeah. Oh, well, then I'll split that one. And we've had a little girl from Italy. Smoke. Yeah. Uh, have you a sister who is also from Italy, who is also in pictures? <laughs> Miss Kilgallen. Are you Marisa Pavan? <laughs> Marisa Pavan is right. I must say, Mrs. Jean-Pierre Aumont, if I may, that I've never seen anybody push her voice as high except Walter Pigeon, who last Sunday went his right straight up through the rafters, it went. I remember. I enjoyed it very much. But I had laryngitis, my dear. <laughs> you will have tomorrow. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I thought you were just a soprano. I didn't know you were a coloratura. You know? You're way up there, aren't you? I try to do my best, you know. Yeah. I manage. <laughs> I don't think we... Uh, did you ask? Did you state the sister before? Uh, no. That Miss Pavan is Pierre Angela's sister, sister, who was on our program, was and she yes. is married to Jean Pierre Aumont, mm -hmm. a French boy who never taught you to speak like that. <laughs> no, I would say. Well, Mrs. Pierre Aumont, thank you very thank much you for being our guest. And being we gave her a rough time. Bye. It was nice of you to come. Will you say goodbye? Let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you come in and sign in quickly, please? Ken? Ken Sherman, right? Yeah. Where, where are you from, Springfield, Massachusetts. Mr. Sherman is from Springfield, Massachusetts, panel. That's come with nice. me, Mr. Sherman. Sit you right down here. Do you know how we score? Yep. Yeah. Fine, let's let everybody at home, those here with us, know exactly what your line is. Two minutes and 45 seconds. Mr. Sherman is salaried. We'll begin with Walter Pigeon. Well, everybody else uh, that's been on has been in services, so I'll say, do you, do you uh, what's the other question? Do you deal in products? products? Do you deal in products? Yes. You do deal in products. A good try. Oh. A good try. It was when I hit it right. <laughs> now then, uh, let me ask you about these products. Uh, are, they, are, they, are these products found in the home? 
Some. Sometimes. Yes. Would that be part of your uh, value as an entertainer, to be able to do whatever it is to hold something in your hands? Uh, yes. Is what you hold in your hands ever, could it ever be used in any kind of a destructive way? Mm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, does it require any ammunition? No. no. <laughs> Let's make you sit down in four to go. Mr. Pigeon, I'm going to give you one more minute. Yeah, You're going to give me what? I'm going to give you one more minute, all of you, to get this. Oh. Do you, uh, do you uh, play some kind of a musical instrument? No. <laughs> <laughs> Seven down and three to go, and whoever got hit over the head with a flat the ball. Is, is what you <laughs> hold in your hand sharp ever? Mm, yes. Yeah. Could it be something like a knife or a sword or a spear? Yeah. yeah. Do you throw it at a target? Yeah. Are you a knife thrower? Yes! <laughs> panel, Mrs. Cody is a professional knife thrower, and actually you've been touring the country for years with your husband and your and daughter. daughter. Is your husband the target? Uh, yes, he's out in the audience. <laughs> no, take it. Not on Sunday night, please. No knives to be thrown. That man with all those bandages on, I think. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a bandage in the house. Yeah. Well, Mrs. Cody, thank you. I think you gave them a lot of trouble anyway, and I'm sorry we didn't stick them all the way. Nice thank to have you with us, ma'am. Good night. <laughs> Tonight's we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends on the panel have been blindfolded. Are the blindfolds all in place, channel? Panel? Yes, panel? Uh -huh. Panel? Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You will ask questions one at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And let's begin it with Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you in motion pictures? <laughs> uh, that, yes. <laughs> Mr. Sir. What was that answer? That was a yes. 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 Yeah. Wait till you get a no. Was that answer made by a, a feminine voice? I guess that's all clear now, Bennett. That's a yes, too, Miss Francis. Is she in a cage? <laughs> uh, strike that off the record, please, it's Your Honor. Struck. Uh, <laughs> will it help us any to find out what country the young lady is from, John? I mean, should we go on that tack? Would yeah, you I say? think it, it would help you. Since we're getting nothing from the voice at all. Hmm. All right. Um, are you an actress from Italy? Oh, yes, Mr. Yes. Pigeon. I just happened to guess that. Oh. We've had oh. Sylvia Magnana, so don't bother. You have, uh, you have had Sylvia. Yeah. Oh, well, then I'll split that one. And we've had a little girl from Italy. Holy smoke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you a sister who is also from Italy, who is also in pictures? <laughs> Miss Kilgallen. Are you Marisa Pavan? <laughs> Marisa Pavan is right. <laughs> I must say, Mrs. Jean-Pierre Aumont, if I may, that I've never seen anybody push a voice as high except Walter <laughs> Pigeon, who last Sunday went his right straight up through the rafters, it went. I remember. I enjoyed it very much. But I had laryngitis, my dear. <laughs> you will have tomorrow. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I thought you were just a soprano. I didn't know you were a coloratura. You know? <laughs> You're way up there, aren't you? I try to do my best, you know. Yeah. I manage. <laughs> I don't think we... Uh, did you ask... Did you state the sister before? Uh, no. That Pierre Miss Pavan is Pierre Angelis' sister, sister, who was on our program, was and she yes. is married to Jean-Pierre Aumont. Mm -hmm. A French boy who never taught you to speak like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, Mrs. Pierre Aumont, thank you very thank much you for being our guest. And being we gave her a rough time. Goodbye. It was nice of you to come. Will you say goodbye? About 
three minutes. Let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you come in and sign in quickly, please? Ken? Ken Sherman, right? Yeah. There, there you are, Springfield, Massachusetts. Mr. Sherman is from Springfield, Massachusetts, panel. That's come with nice. me, Mr. Sherman. Sit you right down here. Do you know how we score? Yep. Fine, let's let everybody at home, those here with us, know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel. We have about two minutes and 45 seconds. Mr. Sherman is salaried. We'll begin with Walter Pigeon. Well, everybody else uh, that's been on has been in services, so I'll say, do you, do you uh, what's the other question? Do you deal in products? products? Do you deal in products? Yes. You do deal in products. Good try. Ah. A good try. It was when I hit it right. <laughs> now then, uh, let me ask you about these products. Uh, are, they, are they are these products found in the home? <laughs> this is Cody Natural. Huh? <laughs> no, I would say this, Walter, and I think you will agree subsequently that uh, you would accept that there is a substantial degree of training necessary to become proficient in the service that is uh, performed. Yes. But uh, Mrs. Cody doesn't seem to agree with you, does well, she? Well, I think perhaps she's too <laughs> modest. She thinks she comes by this talent with, um, out the work that I know must have gone to it, or oh. some people wouldn't be very happy, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I, are you uh, uh, connected in, in any way? Do you have anything to do with any political organizations? No. <laughs> <laughs> What she does yeah. might come in handy in a political organization, <laughs> organization, but I don't think necessarily she has any affiliation with same. Three down, seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mrs. Cody, does your work require either strength or agility? Well, yes. Uh, do you uh, touch people in the course of what you do? No, I yes, don't touch anybody. Right. Four down <laughs> and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Cody, are you connected in any way with a form of athletic endeavor? No. no not as Fighting such. Fighting or wrestling and mm -hmm. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. When you are performing, uh, Mrs. Cody, would you be liable to hold anything in your hands? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would that be part of your uh, value as an entertainer, to be able to do whatever it is to hold something in your hands? Uh, yes. Is what you hold in your hands ever, could it ever be used in any kind of a destructive way? Yes. <laughs> uh, does it require any ammunition? No. no. <laughs> that makes you six down and four to go. Mr. Pigeon, I'm going to give you one more minute. Yeah, You're going to give me what? what? I'm going to give you one more minute, all of you, to get this. Oh. You, uh... Uh, do you uh, play some kind of a musical instrument? <laughs> <laughs> Seven down and three to go, and whoever got hit over the head with right. a bike before. Is, is what you hold in your hand sharp, ever? Mm, yes. Yeah. Could it be something like a knife or a sword or a spear? Mm, yeah. yeah. Do you throw it at a target? Yeah. Are you a knife thrower? Yes! <laughs> panel, Mrs. Cody is a professional knife thrower, and actually you've been touring the country for years with your husband and your and daughter. daughter. Is your husband the target? Uh, yes, he's out in the audience. <laughs> no, take, he's not on Sunday night, please. No knives to be thrown. man with all those bandages <laughs> on, I think. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a bandage in the house. Yeah. Well, Mrs. Cody, thank you. I think you gave them a lot of trouble anyway.